So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the first Goken TMNT Orokusaki aka Shredder. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at this awesome looking box. So we do get an extremely cool looking style box for this first Goken Shredder. So on the front of the box here on the top says first Goken ages 15 and up. Then we do get a first Goken sticker. Then on the center of the box we have some beautiful artwork of the Shredder. And then on the bottom says NT number 2 and Orokusaki. And then the bottom of the box here has nothing on it at all. Then here's the top of the box says Orokusaki. And then here's the one side of it. Same thing. Then the other side says the same thing again. And then the back of it does show a bunch of really awesome poses you can get the figure into along with most of the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure able to take a closer look at the coolest looking Shredder figure that I've ever seen in my entire life. Alrighty, take it a closer detailed look. And first, Goken really did a beautiful job with the detail on the shredder i don't think they could have done any better of a job when it comes to the paint and the sculpt now we do have a couple parts that are die cast when you do take the figure out of the packaging he does have his hair on but i put his helmet on because that's how i know shredder now the helmet is die cast metal and the other part of die cast metal are the feet and i believe the shin armor is die cast metal i don't think these the blades are i just think the purple piece here is die cast i'm not 100 percent sure on that but i am 100 percent sure the feet and the helmet are though and the helmet is definitely one of my favorite parts about the figure this thing just looks beautiful it is very sharp this is an extremely sharp figure so be extra careful when you're articulating it and stuff like that especially the helmet since it is metal this can stab you as you see i got stabbed on my finger right there but Beautiful paint all throughout the helmet. Nice clean paint where the silver meets that very light purple. And I do dig that light purple there. And that just looks so sick, man. And they added uh, like a black paint where the silver meets that purple, which is pretty cool. The face looks dope too. I like how the, how the eyes are all white. And they added like a uh, black paint on the top of the eye as well. You can see his eyebrows sculpted and painted on there. And uh, his mask looks sick too. I like the uh, sculpted lines in it. Also, now one thing some people won't like about the figure is you can see his neck is wider where it meets the torso but gets very thin where it gets up to the head there. And the reason why they did that is so you can articulate the figure with the helmet on. But it does look uh, very odd and some people might not like that. And they do see his cape draped around his neck there. And it has some nice scope with the wrinkles all throughout it, how it looks like it's draping down over his chest right there. And then the actual cape here is a cloth wired cape. Big plus for them for giving us a uh, wired cloth cape. If you know me, then you know I do love wired cloth capes instead of hard plastic articulated ones. And we do have bendy wire on each side. And the bottom of it has like a uh, tethered look to it, which looks really cool. I, I think they did a nice job uh, with the cape and the stitching looks really nice on it as well. Now the shoulder armor here, definitely another awesome piece about the shredder. Everywhere he has his blades and armor, it just looks so awesome. We do do get that purple paint and then the blades of course has that silver metallic-y paint which looks really nice and we do get some nice sculpt and paint all throughout the shoulder pads as you can see there. And they are connected to a hinge where it connects to the torso or the shoulder and then where the uh, joint connects to the uh, armor here. It's on a ball joint so you can articulate it around. And then the torso uh, I think looks really nice. We do get a nice black wash all throughout it. We get some great sculpted lines all throughout it as well. You can see like a bit of a texture in certain parts on the gray there which look really cool. So I like the way the torso turned out in the back. Same design. One thing I don't like about this figure you see all the holes with the screws, man. Like, what the hell is up with that? Is this a 1990 toy or something? To me, that's just so weird. And I think this figure released either 2017 or 2016. I just find that really, really weird, man. Another thing you have to worry about with this figure is paint rub. You're going to get tons of paint rub all throughout the figure, especially on the hands. You can see it on my elbow joints there, the shoulder pad armor keeps rubbing up against it so when you articulate the arms move the shoulder pad armor up around then articulate the arm where you want to put it because you're going to get paint rub all over the shoulders there so you do have to be careful with the paint rub and the arms i think turned out really nice he does have a very like comic booky type look and we get some very nice shading all throughout the arms the sculpt work for the muscle definition looks pretty good 
And then for the forearm armor, dope as hell, just like the shoulder armor, we do get that nice purple paint. We get some straps sculpted on the forearm, which look pretty cool. And then we do have the blades on the top as well, which look really nice. I really dig that, uh, that, that metallic silver and that purple paint that they used. Then for the waist here, we do get like a uh, little belt with like a piece of cloth hanging here. I feel like they should have put bendy wire on it so it can go along with however you're articulating the cape. You can make this go along with it. But there is no bendy wire. It has that tethered look to it again. I do like the way that like, I guess the belt buckle looks on Shred here. I think that looks pretty cool. And then for the legs, kind of has a similar design to the torso right there. It has like a, uh, like a, like a sculpted texture in certain parts of the lines and it looks pretty cool and then the lower legs here we do get the shin armor with the blades on it looking sick as hell you can see the straps on the back there which look dope and then the feet here some people might not like the way the ankle joints look personally it doesn't really bother me because you do get some really nice ankle articulation with this figure but one thing you do have to be extra careful of is the spikes on his toes these are very sharp just like the sharp points on his helmet since it is die cast metal but the feet I think turned out pretty good and then on the bottom we do get a little bit of sculpt work but overall uh, I think first Koken really did a beautiful job with the detail all throughout this shredder and I can't be any more happy with how the paint sculpt turned out but anyway let's continue on moving on to the accessories we get a ton of awesomeness included with this shredder so what we do get we do get an interchangeable hair piece and his helmet so starting on the left we do get shredders to pay and the sculpt of it does look really nice i'll show you what it looks like on the figure in a second and then we also do get his badass helmet and they did a beautiful job with the paint sculpt on both pieces there and i'm going to show you how to swap them right now and the way you swap shredder's helmet with his toupee or vice versa it's really simple they're just pegged into the top of his head so when you want to take one or the other off just pull up as you can see the peg hole on the top there then just take the hair and just peg that in and then there you go you got shredder with hair and that does look pretty cool as you can see there i am more of a fan of the helmet though because that is the shredder that i do know so we do get that and then we also get his weapons rack with his own version of the Ninja Turtle weapons. Then here is the display rack without anything on it. And it is a pretty cool little accessory to add with Shredder. We do get Japanese writing, I'm guessing, right here, which looks, which looks nice. And it displays all the weapons really well. You could even put Shredder's helmet on top like so. And you can also store Shredder's sword right in the back here. So that's how you get that stuff on. Then we do get Shredder's version of Donnie's bow staff, which is pretty cool. Very clean paint all throughout it and very nice sculpt. The ends of it looks like it'll really hurt if you get hit by it. So this one goes on the bottom. Then next, we do get Shredder's version of Raphael's size, which look really cool. I dig the way these look. I love that red paint for the handle as well. So we do get a pair of those, and those belong right here. Whoops, I missed. And then next, we get Shredder's version of Mikey's nunchucks. And these look the most vicious with the spikes on the end. Man, if you got hit by that, it'd be over. And then we do get a real chain on it as well. But very nice sculpt and paint detail all throughout, all throughout that. And these are very sharp, so be careful of that. And then you store those there and Shredder's damn sword fell off. And then finally, we get a pair of Shredder's version of Leonardo's swords and these are so damn cool looking i love the sculpted lines all throughout the blade i love the paint on the blade and the blue uh, on the handle on the cross guard as well really cool looking uh shredderized versions of the ninja turtles weapons and once you store everything on there this is what it looks like and it's a really cool display feature here i really like that they included this stuff with the shredder so we do get that awesome stuff and then we also get Shredder's own personal badass sword. And then we do get this extra piece that is bagged up. And this was with a sheet of paper in the box with the promotional images on it. But I have no idea what the hell it's for. I don't know what this is. It doesn't look like any extra joints or anything like that. If anybody knows what this is, please feel free to let me know in the comments. So we get that random piece. And then we get Shredder's badass sword and this thing looks so damn sick and it definitely lo looks shredderized i love the silver 
for the blade. I love all the sculpted lines all throughout it. The serrated edge looks pretty cool. And it is sharp on those uh, sharp ends, so be careful of that. And the handle looks dope too. Nice sculpt and uh, purple paint on there. And you can actually make it into another weapon when you just do that. And then there you go. You have a uh, double-bladed weapon now for Shredder, which is uh, pretty cool actually. It's like two weapons in one. So we do get Shredder's own personal sword. And then we also get six alternate hands with the removable hand blades. And starting on the top here, we do get a pair of fists, of course, which do come on the figure out of the packaging. And all the hands are very simple to swap out since it is a softer, rubbery type plastic. And they do get paint rub very easily. So you do have to be careful of that. And then next, we do get some regular gripping hands. And then we do get another pair of gripping hands. But then we do have the opening between the ring and middle finger, which are meant for the size and I'm going to show you what that looks like right about now and how to swap the hand blades. And as I promised here are the size and the Psy gripping hands and he does hold them the way Raphael does and I think it was pretty cool that they did include these type of hands because it does look cool the way he holds the size like that and the way you swap out the hand blades is very simple they're just pegged into the top of the hand and each one is has a specific peg so you know the right one goes to the right hand the left one goes to the left hand and every time you swap the hands you got to take them out take the hands out put the new hands in and then peg the hand blades right on like that and then there you go as simple as that but anyway that is all the really cool accessories included with Heroku Saki let's keep moving on with the rest of the review shall we now for the height of the shredder to the very top of his head it looks like he's about eight inches and three quarters of an inch tall then to the very top of the spiky piece on his helmet it looks like he's about nine inches tall and this was the issue a lot of people did have with this figure is that it was way too tall and wouldn't fit in scale with the other team and t figures which i completely understand because that's the reason why i didn't buy this figure when it first released and then here he is compared to the NECA original movie team in T. Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo. And he definitely is way too tall to scale with these turtles. I mean, you can use him as a super shredder, but imagine comparing him to the Rebel Tech turtles or even the SH Figure Arts turtles. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Thanos, the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Hulk, the NECA Ultimate Edition Ahab Predator, and the Storm Collectibles Goro. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Smoke, the SH Figure Arts Sage Mode Naruto, the Mefex Tactical Suit Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and first Goken really worked in the movement very well on the Shredder, and this is what really sold me on this figure. There is a point of articulation they don't have that I do wish that they did put on the figure, but we do get two joints at the neck here. So the upper neck joint with the helmet on, you can only get them to look up about that much. It does look down pretty good with that joint there, and then you do get the pivot, and then of course it does swivel the lower neck joint does go forward a tiny bit so you can pretty much get them to look directly down and then can't really get them to look up anymore with combining the lower neck joint with the upper neck joint we do get pretty good pivot at the lower neck and then it does swivel as well so we do get nice movement at both the neck joints just gets hindered uh, by his helmet a little bit now the torso here this joint eh, is a little loose and I feel like over time the more you articulate it the looser it's gonna get so you're gonna have to be careful with the torso but it does crunch forward pretty well it doesn't really go back at all there is no pivot at the torso and really no swivel at all and this is the point of articulation I'm talking about that I wish they added in the figure the torso and the waist do not have pivot at all so it kind of does hinder you from doing certain poses with this figure and then the waist is just a swivel which is really odd man this is an import and all he has is a swivel at the waist so really disappointing that there's no pivot either at the waist or the torso now the arms here the shoulder pad pieces as i said are on a hinge so they can hinge up and down and then you can move them all around since they are connected uh, with a ball peg there and then the shoulders here you do have a nice butterfly joint so you can move the arms 
forward and back. You don't get like a circular motion out of the shoulder. The butterfly joint is really the only joint there. Then the arms do go out to the sides a lot more than 90 degrees, so that is definitely good. They do go up and down. We do have bicep swivel. We have double jointed elbows that just get 90 degrees. Then we do have a ball hinge on the wrist, so it does swivel and hinges back and forth. Now for the legs here, we do have like a ratchety type joint for the legs since he does have die cast from like the uh, the lower legs down. So it's definitely good for that and Shredder can kick forward a little more than 90 degrees. Goes to the back about 45 degrees and Shredder can Jean-Claude Van Damme it which is awesome because he is a ninja. Now for the thighs here, we do get an upper thigh swivel as you can see. Then we do have double jointed knees that bend back all the way, so that is definitely awesome. Then the ankles here, they do swivel. They hinge up really well. Same with hinging down, and then we get a very nice ankle pivot. It doesn't go outward, though. It only pivots. And then we do have a toe hinge, but the joint is so tight on mine, and I'm afraid to move it because I'm going to stab myself. So I'm not going to bother using the toe hinge, but it is there on the figure. So overall... This figure really does have some very nice articulation. It's disappointing to me that there's no torso or waist pivot, but other than that, you're going to be able to get this Oroku Saki in pretty much any type of shredder-like poses, and I'm about to show you some of them right about now. But anyway, that is my review of the first Goken Oroku Saki, aka the Shredder. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure between a 1 through 10, I'd have to give it an even 8. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I did get mine from a retailer that I'd rather not mention because they're not worth buying from. So I would recommend going through Amazon or eBay because Ageless Geeks does not have this in stock anymore, but you can get your other figures and collectibles from AgelessGeeks.com. If you can't find stuff on there from them, I would recommend going through their Instagram or Facebook page. I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. And if you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, oh well, I guess you didn't like it. But thanks for watching. I will see you later. some beautiful artwork of the shredder and then on the bottom see on the top says first goken ages 17 or pff, 15 and up god damn ye really dope poses you can get this figure into along with most of his accessories damn it i messed that up twice you bugger looks like he's around eight inches and three quarters of an inch tall them two it was too tall to fit in with their other team and t Shasta. <laughs> and he definitely is way too tall for these turtles. I mean, you can use him as a sh sh shooper. <laughs> Super shredder, damn it. And here is the display rack without ev ev ugh, everything on it. Without anything on it. Damn it! And the way you sh swap. <laughs> swap. The heck. Which are meant for him to hold the size of a specific way. And I'll show you. I'll show you. But we do have the opening in between the middle and the ring finger, which are 